Well, guys, today we're going to take a look at the first alert security safe. And I'm going to tell you right up front, this is probably one of the nicest small safes that you guys have ever asked me to take a look at. The price point on this is about $80, $79.99 on Amazon. You can catch them on sale, but I'll tell you more about that later, how I got a, a deal, at least on, on this one. Quality-wise, I am very impressed. This thing is, is very ergonomically designed. You can see everything on here has a chamfered edge, no sharp edges at all. Likewise, there's no external handle on this thing. In order to get it open, you have to use the locking mechanism. Nothing to pry on it. Uh, the locking mechanism is in a plastic housing that's blistered. It's basically glued onto the metal box. There's a tiny hole in the box to allow the cable, but other than that, breaking this off is not going to do you a bit of good other than giving you a broken safe. Uh, on the front of it, you can see we have a very tight little seam, and the seam all the way around, by the way, is shim protected. Not that there's anything in there to shim, but it is shim protected. This little hole right here uh, is the secondary lock, and we'll talk a little bit more about him later. As we rotate him around, again, shim protected all the way around the per uh, perimeter. I'll show you there's a flange on the inside. This is the single hole uh, on the side here, and that allows you for their lockdown cable. We'll talk more about him in just a moment. On the back of it, uh, you'll find your hinge. It is welded. The rod is welded in place, so we can't drive that rod out and then defeat the hinge like that. Just not going to happen. And, of course, nothing on this side. On the bottom, we got a couple of interesting features. You'll notice we have these four little dimples. And that's because if you store it on the floor, this will raise your safe just a little bit above the floor in case there's liquid spilled on the floor, or maybe condensation. This will prevent, uh, and that air circulation will prevent rusting on the bottom of your safe. Unlike some of the other safes, this one is also designed to be bolted to the floor. So if you've got a couple of holes, these are plugged right now, but you can easily unplug them from the inside, drill a couple holes, and then bolt this directly to a, to a wall or to the floor, to a shelf and nobody's just going to pick up your safe and walk away with it. So really well thought out, as I said, very ergonomic. The primary lock on this is this guy right here. Now, a lot of suggestions say that these are fingerprint locks, and in fact they're not. These are just mechanical switches. There are micro switches beneath these little tabs here. It doesn't require a fingerprint. You have to know the combination, and you can set the combination yourself anywhere from four digits up to eight digits, and you can reuse the numbers as many times as you want uh, in that eight digit. So I can't do the math in, in my head, but there's an awful lot of possible combinations that you'll have to go through in order to pick it if you're going to do a, a sequential brute force type attack. The other thing that prevents that, though, is in, you get three tries. And if you fail in three tries, the lock will disable itself for four minutes. And then you get three more tries. So doing the math, you better bring a food truck with you because you're going to be there a while trying to defeat all of those. There are no lights or beeps or anything. There are these little raised uh, dimples, so in the dark you can very easily reach up and feel which number it is that you're on to help you get in. I've left this one set for the factory, which is one, two, three, four. You can either place your hand on it like that, or you can go one at a time, whatever your preference is. Now when I key it in, you'll notice a couple of things. When I successfully key in one, two, three, four, I'll get a green light indicating you successfully dialed it. If you get a red blink, then you got the wrong combination. You got two more tries before it locks itself out. So I'll try to get it correct on the first time. You get a slight whirring, and then you notice the door popped up just a little bit. That's because inside of the door, on the front here, is this little button. A lot of guys have asked what that is. It's not a panic button. It's not a disablement button. It's like, a, it's like an ejector. When the door is unlocked, that will just push the door up enough to allow you to get your fingers underneath that ledge to open it up. Uh, as I said, around the entire perimeter, you have an anti-shim. There's a little gap right here and a little gap over on this side in the same place. But no worries because on the top of the door, there you go, there's your anti-shim on the top to prevent shimming. It also acts as a guide when you start to close that door to align everything perfectly before you do your locking. Uh, internally, we, everything is foam lined, very nicely done. Uh, the locking pin on the top is a uh, hardened steel roll pin that will fit down inside of the locking lug right here. 
On the right, you see a little red button with an indicator light. When you, want, when you reset your combination, that is how you do it. And then the indicator light will blink green when you successfully punched in the combination twice to confirm that it was right before you lock it. So pretty well thought out there. The locking pawl itself actually looks like something out of a car. Um, when you push down on this, it will lock it. The roll pin engages in that little slot right there. And then you overcome the pressure of the ejector, and then you can lock it just like that. When I dial the number from the outside, you'll hear the, the, the servo uh, activate. And it'll just pop it up, and then the spring loader will push the door up enough allow you to get inside of it. Very, very cool uh, mechanism. Very well thought out. So let's go ahead and lock this bad boy up. And let's just say what happens when that fails, because I, I always look for a backup. This is powered by three batteries. What happens when they fail? Now, they're supposed to last about three years, but what if it's three years in one month when I try to get into this thing in an emergency? Well, yeah, you need to have a regular battery changing program, but you can still get into it. And because located right here is a little rubber plug, if I can get him out of there, that hides a tubular lock. And that overrides the electronic lock. So if the batteries die or it's defective or something, you can still get in as long as you don't lose your key. As far as I can see, this is the real vulnerability. I couldn't find any way to shim this thing. As I said, there's a lot of anti-shim, but this little guy is not spring-loaded. He has a mechanical block. When he's closed, there's no way you're going to be able to get up around the limb, around that corner, around that corner, up to the top, around that corner, down the side of there to shim him. And even if you could find some alien technology to allow you to snake around all those curves, I know it's ridiculous, but if I don't say it, someone will say, why didn't you try to shim it? You can't shim it. This is not spring-loaded. There's a mechanical block. So sorry, guys, not shimmable. So you either cut it open or you keep track of your key. That's probably, in my view, the most vulnerable. And looking at this key, it's a seven-pin tubular lock, and you look at some of the cuts, all really deep cuts on this guy. So impressioning this one, while possible, the deeper the cuts and the more of them, the longer it's going to tape. I'm still going to try. Let me go ahead and see if I can't find my tubular lock pick and see if we can't pick this guy. All right, guys, let's make sure this key works before we waste a lot of time trying to impression this. we got to rotate this 90 degrees counterclockwise in order to get an open. Take the key out of there and lock it back. By the way, these scrapes, uh, it doesn't come from the factory that way. It comes factory perfect. That's from me trying to defeat it using my Sparrow's Magneto. I spent a lot of time raking this thing back and forth, back and forth on every possible side, Arr, trying to beat that solenoid, but I didn't have a bit of luck. But other than to scrape it up a little bit. All right, let's impression it. Uh, I have already pre-zeroed all of the needles on here. So let's see if we can get into this guy. Now I know it's gonna take a while simply because we saw the key, we saw all those very deep cuts. So I'm gonna try to expedite things just a little bit by using what I call the, the, the cookie roller technique. So I'm gonna use both hands and push straight into the, the keyway and then just roll it back and forth like this. As long as you keep it perpendicular, I'll try to come in an angle, maybe you can get a better view. Try to keep it perpendicular, um, and you, you shouldn't have any problem at all. When it starts turning quite a bit, and I know I'm getting much closer to getting it open, I'll generally stop doing this and just do it manually with one hand in the traditional way. Now, we do know a lot of deep cuts on this lock, so I knew it would take a while. I didn't want to tire out just one forearm. I might need that arm later. Heck, I might tire up both arms on this thing. There we go. Got an open now. Since it, we have an open, I'm going to rotate it back, tighten this down. Now I have a key. But anyway, there you go. That's how you do it. While we have it open, let's talk about a couple of different things here. First of all, I didn't really talk about this hook back here. That's because with this kit, you also get a steel cable. And the idea is if you're going to use this, you can tie this to a radiator 
or tie it to something in your house, or if you're going to use it in your car, you can wrap this around. And the way they demonstrate in the instructions is to run it around your car rail, slide that back through there, then slide one loop through here, around there, and that way it can't go back out through that hole. The problem with that is, let me close this up, is you have this really long, let me get my magnet off of it, have this really long lead that somebody can then slam against it. They can get a lot of momentum and they can maybe break through the side here, very unlikely. More likely they're either going to break your car rail or whatever it's tied to, or they're going to break this little coupling right here, either here on this end or on the other end. So ideally, you want to keep that lead just as short as possible. So what I've come up with is you put it around you, whatever it is, around your object, run both cables through the side of the, the box, and then pull all of the excess, just tighten that up around whatever it is, as tightly as you can get it, and just fold up your extra cable inside of the box. Put your valuables in there, lock it up, and now they can't use it. They can't get any momentum at all. In order to break that, they're going to have to use either a pair of bolt cutters or brute strength to kind of wrench it away from the tie-down object. Anyway, just an idea. The other weakness, as I said, is this little guy right here. I'm not too excited about a tubular lock. So what I've come up with, if this were mine, what I would probably do is epoxy that to totally just disable it 100% or on second thought, what if you were to mount this on the floor inside of a closet and then the wall was right here. Now it's just enough of a distance away to where if this the batteries ran die, dead or this became disabled in some way, I would have enough room to get this little short key around the edge against the wall, get it in there and open up my box. But there would not be enough room for someone to get a big long impressioning tool in there and go through all the cookie rolling exercises that I just went through to get this open. Just a couple of ideas to make this a little bit more secure. Of all the boxes, I got to say this is about the best one so far. Even at the price point of $80, I got to say I give this the Lock Lab approved. Appreciate your time, guys. Stay safe, stay legal. If you would like to win this, easy to do. Stick around and I'll tell you how to register. Thanks, guys. All you need to do is navigate to locklab.com, the tribal website, and scroll down in the middle of the page. You'll see all the giveaway buttons Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. But the one you're looking for is the weekend review giveaway, Purple Band. Just click on it. It'll take you to the registration page. Again, scroll to the bottom, put in a good email address. So if you win, I can get in touch with you, let you know. Put in a username, doesn't matter what it is, and click Submit. When you're done, you'll get a green check mark confirming your entry. Thanks, guys.